remind everyone or just kind of what was the newer kind of questions. Um, the newer kind of questions that I work through here were the um, the dopamine infusion question. And the trick to this one is just making sure you convert minutes to hours and you convert either micrograms to milligrams or milligrams to micrograms. So you can kind of um, do that. And then earlier today, if you weren't on earlier today, you'll see that I um, created a different question. It's the same type of question. I just changed the numbers and then work through it. Um, so that's there. And then um, this is just set up for this question because um, someone just needed some clarification, but I'll actually um, clear this out. And then that way um, you have it fresh if you decide to look at this and review it on your own. Um, so everything else is pretty much the same. You have some flow rate questions. You have some infusion questions. Um, you have a heparin question, heparin protocol question. You have your typical, um, conversion questions. And so, um, I'll let you decide if you have any questions, um, to, to go over and just let me know and then we'll, we'll tackle them. Yeah, no problem. I can do that. All right. Um, so what I'm going to do is, um, yeah, we'll just, I'll just go over the, the, the example that's already here. Um, that way we can kind of see it. So I, I did it one way. And so you can always go back and watch the review. Uh, once I upload it of how I set it up this in this direction, but let me show you how we would do, um, number 11, uh, um, as it's written here. Um, yeah, so let's see, actually you got the right answer. So you just round to the nearest 10th and you have 13.1. So you, you did it right. You just want to make sure you round your answer to the nearest tenth. That's all. But I'll I'll work it through anyways, and I'll even do it the way um, someone else was doing it, just so we can kind of see an alternative way. So step one is you have to take the patient's weight and multiply it by your available. So it's the five micrograms kilogram minute and what that does is it eliminates kilograms and then you're left with um 350 um micrograms per minute now the next thing i would um recommend that you do is then just convert minutes to hours so that way it's one less thing that you have to worry about at the end and then it'll also give you a nice big microgram number, which is sometimes nicer to work with. So just to confirm, 70 times 5 is 350 times 60 gives me 21,000 micrograms. Now, once I have my 21,000 micrograms per hour, now it's just a matter of converting micrograms per hour to milliliters per hour. 
And we can do that by using what we have available. Now, what I'm gonna do is 400 milligrams, if I convert that to micrograms, that's the same thing as saying 400,000 micrograms. So that's where, what I'm about to write, that's where I'm getting that information. I just converted milligrams to micrograms. In order to do this type of math, you have to make sure your units are the same. So you can either convert milli micrograms to milligrams or you convert milligrams to micrograms. Either way, just make sure you do that. So I'm trying to eliminate micrograms. So I have this 400,000 micrograms. I know that's a big number. And I have my 250 ml. And then all I'm going to do is multiply across the top and divide by the bottom. So 21,000 times 250. And then divided by 400,000. And then I'm going to get what you got, the 13.125. And we're just going to round that to the nearest tenth. So 13.1 milliliters per hour. So like I said, you got the right answer. It was just, um, you just needed to round it to the nearest tenth. All right, so take yeah, take a look at the different questions. If um, because this this review should be the same the same packet that you got from um, um, from the nursing department, and just let me know if there was any questions or if you thought that the key was wrong in some places. Just let me know, and we'll we'll work through it. Oh, okay. Let me, I just want to see what it was. It says 13.1. But I might, maybe I corrected this key um, from the original time that it was put together. What is the, what does the key say on yours? Oh, your your key says that the answer is 22. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's wrong. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Was it the same numbers that I worked with? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know why um, it would be different unless the numbers were different but it sounds like they were the same number so yep so yeah your answer should be 13.1 um All right, let's check on number four. Okay, yeah, so what, what answer did you, uh, what, what answer was given to you? Yeah, so the answer should be 30. So, yeah, I don't know why um, why there's that discrepancy. So, but yeah, so, and I think I corrected it on here. Let me just double check.
what would be better is if I just had a separate number four, yeah, 30. So I corrected it on here. That may have been um, sometimes when the keys and the reviews get made, they uh, things get transferred incorrectly. So sorry about that. All right, well, yeah, double check. If there's anything that you got wrong and you're certain that it was right, um, let me know. I'll I'll make the corrections as needed. Okay, yeah, it's up. So this is I wrote this up as the 240 review. Um, I've you know I've been editing it, so you will see my writing in it. But I tried to do the writing separate from um, the original. I need to start making. Uh, PDF versions of these and just have them so you can print them off as blanks. But if you go through, if you download the doc, the Word document, you should be able to delete my my writing. Um, that way you can look at it as a fresh, um, fresh uh, document. Yeah, and I have this labeled as 20, 24 Fall Nursing 240 Review, just so when you look for it, you'll see that it's listed as that. And then I cut out all the um, the stuff that you know tells you what books you need and things like that. I'm still here if you have any questions. Okay, yeah, let's do it. So, um, so let me just go ahead and in the numerical order, 19, 20, 24, 28, and 30, um, that way we can and then I'll get that because it's two people asked for 28. So um, so for 19, um, this is just a drop rate question. You've been you've seen these since uh, second semester. Um, the trick is knowing what information you need when you're doing 19. So anytime you have a flow rate question, you want to make sure you're following the 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 uh, drop rate question. You make sure you're following the the following uh thing. You need you need two pieces of information. You need flow rate, and you need your drop factor. And those two pieces of information will give you your drop rate. Your flow rate is always going to be milliliters per hour, or milliliters per minute. Your drop factor will always be given to you, drops per milliliter, and your drop rate is always going to be drops per minute, and that sh should be out. It should be given to you as well. So, what is my flow rate? It tells me 120 milliliters per hour. And I have a drop factor of 15. And then the only other thing I need to do is convert that hour to minute. And then I'll show you a shortcut on this in just a second. So when you do this, you get an answer of 30 drops per minute. Now, um, one of the things you might be wondering is, why didn't I do anything with this 500 milliliters? 500 milliliters just tells me the total of the volume that's available in the IV. So when I'm doing a flow rate question, 
I don't really need to know about this unless it told me 500 milliliters in six hours or 500 milliliters in two hours or whatever. If it gave me, if that was my only information as far as uh, getting a flow rate, that's the only reason I would use that. But since it gives me the flow rate, 120 milliliters per hour, and it gives me the drop factor, 15, those are the two pieces of information I need in order to solve um, this question. Um, in addition, this, the simplistic way of answering this question is I can just write off the bat, instead of writing one hour, I can just write uh, 60 minutes. And then this way, you can save a step in your analysis in your analysis or in your uh, dimensional analysis but you'll still get the same answer for number 20 it's the same thing we have a 100 milliliters 180 milliliters to infuse over one hour, drop factor of 10. So you're going to set it up the same way. But this time I'm not going to do the over an hour. I'm just going to say 180 milliliters, 60 minutes times 10. Cancel out milliliters. And then we get, it's the same answer, 30. All right, let's skip on down to 24. And 24, I already worked through, so I'll just leave it here. So again, same thing, volume over time. And then you were like, well, what about that 200 milligrams? This, believe it or not, is a commonly missed question uh, for 230 and 240 or 220, 230 and 240. And the reason being is that you're trying to figure out what to do with that 200 milligrams, but you don't need to worry about the 200 milligrams. That just tells you the strength of the IV solution. It's the same thing as saying I have 0.9% normal saline or half normal saline or 5% dextrose water. Like it doesn't matter what it is. You just care about how quickly it's being administered. So you just take your volume over time, 120 over 30 times 10. And then that's how you get your answer of 40. All right, 28. All right, so there are two pieces of information here on your, um, on your label. And you, as long as you use um, one, um, you'll be good to go. But basically what it's telling you here is Lenoxin's available and you can look, you can use this information or this information. Don't use them both. So your orders in milligrams, but then it gives you micrograms, but in parentheses milligrams. So you can just ignore that and either use 0.5 milligrams per two ml, or what I would highlight, what I would recommend doing is using the 0.25 milligrams per ml. So I would just like eliminate that. Basically, they're show they're showing you that they're the same. It's the same information. So I don't know why they have to tell you the two milliliters versus the one milliliter, but I would just say use the the one, and then you're gonna do ordered over available. So 0.125 milligrams over your 0.25 milligrams times one ml. And then you're going to get whatever that is. <laughs> 0. 0.125 divided by 0. 0.25, which would be just 0. 0.5. So the trick with these types of questions, especially when you see labels like this, you just want to make sure you're choosing one of the four options that are here. You have micrograms per, mil, per two ml, 500 micrograms in two ml, or 
0.5 milligrams in 2 ml or 250 micrograms per milliliter or 0.25 milligrams per milliliter. You have four options there and just make sure you choose one. If you choose a microgram one, you have to convert milligrams to micrograms, but they gave you the milligrams. So just choose the milligrams, which is why, um, why I did what I did, chose that. Keep it, keep it like that. Uh, and then 30. All right, so 30 is quote unquote a fun one because this is just, um, it's another flow rate question. You're going to calculate how much time has elapsed. Um, and then you're going to make an F or, and then determine when the, um, infusion will end. And then they want your answer in military time. So they use the example here. Here's the military time example, right? So you can see the 0700 to 1500. So 7 AM to 3 PM. That sounds like a nice shift. Um, I don't know if anyone works that exact shift, but seems, seems decent. Um, you make rounds at 7.30, find an IV of dextrose 5%, half normal saline, one liter bag regulated on an electronic infusion pump at the order rate of 125 milliliters per hour with 500 milliliters remaining. So half of it's already gone. So it started off as a liter um, bag, and now it's already down to 500 milliliters, okay? Uh, the order specifies a continuous infusion. At what time should you anticipate hanging the next bag? So basically, you want to know when will um, when will that 500 milliliters be done in regards to the 125 milliliter uh, scenario. So let me open this up a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the um, we're going to take what we have remaining, the 500 milliliters, and I'm going to um, Get rid of milliliters for hours. So I want to know how much time is left. So 125 milliliters in an hour. And then that's going to be four hours. So if you um if you made your rounds and initially checked it at 0730, you're just going to add the um 400 to that. That's the four hours later. And then, so you should check it at 11.30 a.m. Or switch it at 11.30 a.m. So I know you probably didn't need to see this part here, but if you ever get stuck on military time, that's all they're wanting to make sure you can do is that you can add up those numbers and know that they use, you know, the time as, you know, the two-digit numbers just go from 0 to 24, or actually technically zero to 23. And then, and then it starts back over at zero. And then um, knowing what day and time and how that relates to AM, PM. So like in this scenario here, you started at 7 AM and you end at 3 PM. So um, ideally you'll know that if you don't know that um, you'll get to know it um, as you go through the nursing program. So, all right. So that was 19, 20, 24, 28, and 30. So thank you for the questions. I can do 31. Good. So looks like in 31, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, bring this down so it's all on one page. So this is your heparin protocol. Now you may remember from seeing this from previous semester or last semester at least, there's these, this whole thing, one through 15 is a protocol. It's a heparin protocol. So if you do a Google search for heparin protocol, you're going to see these steps. It's going to be like a, like something that would be posted where, you know, this, this procedure is being done. And so all these things that are crossed out are just to remind you that those are not things you need to answer or do anything with those. That's just telling you how to follow the protocol. What is important is what I've highlighted here. Okay, so I'm going to just highlight this in yellow. I like this in yellow. And these are all just um, places to remind you of what's important. Okay, patient's weight's important. 
And then answering, it even tells you, answer the two questions below. What are the two questions below? Calculate the bolus and calculate the infusion rate. Those are the two pieces of information that are important for solving this particular example. So it tells you that the patient, that's 198 pounds, we divide by 2.2 and we get 90 kilograms. So step one is we want to bolus the patient with 80 units per kilogram. Um, that's not supposed to be there. There we go. And then you're going to start an infusion at 18 units per kilogram per hour. Okay. And the other piece of information that's important is knowing your availables. 25,000 units and 250 milliliters half normal saline and your bolus dosage strength, which is a thousand units per milliliter. So those are your two um, um, pieces of information. And then they're going to ask you to do two things. Calculate a bolus, which is what they did here. Calculate an infusion rate, which they have you do here. So I already worked this through, so but I'll just show you, um, I'll walk you through and talk you through what I did. I took the 90 kilograms, I multiplied that by 80 units, and I get 7,200 units. Then I use the bolus dose strength of 1,000 units per milliliter to convert units to milliliters. And then I get an answer of 7.2 milliliters. In... Um, and then for calculating the infusion rate, I take the same patient, same weight, 90 kilograms, multiply by 18 units per kilogram per hour, which gives me 1,620 units per hour. Then I'm going to compare that to the um, uh, what I have available in the IV, which is the 250 milliliter half normal saline containing 25,000 units of heparin. And then I'm going to get a milliliter per hour of 16.2. And then, um, so that's how you would solve 31. Now, if you want to see it um, worked out like as a kind of like a blank, then I can do this alternative one. Um, that way you can kind of see it from scratch. Um, would you like me to do that? Okay, got it. All right. So in this scenario, what I did is I basically condensed everything from the big um, protocol and I just wrote it all here, right? Our order, bolus the patient, what we have available, um, and then just to, to kind of solve it. So let's work through this. So in this scenario, we have a 198 pound patient. I think that if that's the same, I'm going to change it. Oh yeah, let's change it. Let's make this, instead of 198 pounds, um, let's just make this 212 pounds. I think that ends up being a round number again. Nope. So let's do a 220 pound patient. Keep it simple. All right. So 220 pound patient is the same thing as saying um, 100 kilograms. So calculate the number of milliliters to administer the, for the bolus. I'm going to have 100 kilograms times my bolus, which is the 80 units per kilogram. Gives me 8,000 units. Kilograms is gone. We don't want units, we want milliliters. So I'm going to use my bolus dosage strength, which tells me I have 1,000 units per milliliter. And then my answer will just be 8 milliliters. And that's how you calculate the bolus dose given that scenario. Now, if I wanted to do the infusion rate, then I would just 
take the um, same patient weight, 100 kilograms, Now I'm going to multiply by the infusion rate, which is 18 units. And I'm just going to write it out like this, kilogram per hour. And then I'm going to get 1,800 units per hour. And again, I don't want units per hour. It tells me to look for milliliters per hour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert units to milliliters using my um, available 25,000 units, 250 milliliters, half normal saline. So they said, you don't have to guess where these things are coming from. It tells you, you just have to know where to find it. So 250 milliliters, 25,000 units. And then you're going to get 18 milliliters per hour. Is that right? Just double check. Yeah, 18. Okay. Got myself confused. So really the only thing that changes in the heparin protocol are two things. The patient's weight which, you know, you could get any variety of things. And there's lots of scenarios that I've written up about heparin. You can even look in the 220, 230, like review and watch those reviews where I go over the heparin protocol. And that way you can kind of see some variations there. Um, but then there's also, um, they could ask you, I doubt they're going to ask you this, but they could ask you like after six hours, if they did an APTT, and then they ask you to follow these other um, steps in the protocol, which can include like a rebolus or increasing the rate. Like we started off with a rate of 18. And if it tells you to increase the rate by four, then you would go eight, you'd go 18 plus four, which would give you 22. And then you'd calculate your milliliters per hour based off of that increase. Or the most likely scenario is this rebolus with 40 and then increase the rate by two. So if you've ever seen me work through a um, heparin protocol where I mentioned the 20 units per kilogram per hour, most likely I'm going and using um, this scenario with the, um, the rebolus and then increasing the rate. But I didn't see that in your work. Um, or in your uh, packet. So I'm not even going to spend time worrying about it too much. So, all right. All right. So let me double check. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, let me just double check on number 11. Oh, um, did you re remember to convert minutes to hours? That might be where you're getting the 22 from. Let me just double check. So five times 70. times 250 divided by. Yeah, so you're probably getting 0. 0.22. And then when you multiply that number by 60, that's where you get the 13.1. So I don't think you're getting 22. I think you're getting 0. 0.22. Yeah, so and then if you're converting... Um, and if you're converting micrograms to milligrams, which I see that you did, so 350 divided by 1,000, you get the 0.35. So that still works out good. Um, so 0 0.35 times 250 divided by 400, you're still getting 0 0.22. So yeah, then you just need to make sure, like I did here, right? You got to convert minutes to hours because your flow rate's always going to be in milliliters per hour. 
if it's not milliliters per hour, it's drops per minute or it's units per hour, but it's never going to be milliliters per minute. Um, you won't see that. Um, at least I haven't seen that. Normally your test will tell you like, you know, the infusion, you know, calculate the infusion rate in milliliters per hour. But for whatever reason, this question didn't do that. Um, but yeah, you want to convert minutes to hours. You're welcome. These are all great questions. And thank you for asking for clarification because it's helpful for others, especially when they come back and look at this stuff later on in the review uh, on YouTube. All right, you guys have asked quite a bit of questions. Any other questions, anything um, that you wanna see worked, just let me know. You're welcome. All right. Well, like I said, if there's no other questions, we can we can certainly stop here. And um, I have um, two more sessions I'll be doing for the 240 uh, section. Um, I'll be um, here on Thursday from 2.30 to 3.30 and then 6.15 to 7.15. If, um, if you can't make it to any of those ad additional times, you can always just email me what questions you like to see me work through just even just to confirm your answers. Um, and then, um, we can go from there. And if you have any, or if you want to see, like, can you show me, you know, an alternative to this particular question, um, you know, this meeting, whichever question you're referencing, just let me know and I'll make up a new question. I'll even put it on the same, uh, sheet there. So sure. Number 14. All right. So the trick with um, this is knowing um, what information to use and what information to ignore. So it, it gives you a couple pieces of information. It tells you um, that you have an order of 200 milligrams, that you have an available dose of furosemide 100 milligrams, um, but it's IV. So you need to know the milliliters with that information. And so, 100 milligrams is important, but the answer you're, or what you're really looking for is that right there. So you need to know the 200 and you need to know the 30. And then you're gonna ignore the 100 because that doesn't tell you what the concentration of it is. It just tells you the total, probably what's total in the actual vial. So 200 divided by 30. And you'll get 6.6 .6 repeating. So if you're given this and administering this, it would be 6.7 milliliters. You're welcome. Good questions.
And then if you go through and you, um, you know, go through the, the edited version of this, you will see that the, um, uh, I have written, um, let me see what I want to say. Um, anything that doesn't have a number associated with it is just a um, alternative version of that question that I just, so that way you have at least another um, variation of the question. So you can see like, okay, what if the order is 150 and the available strength is 60 milligrams per milliliter? And you can just see that it's a just a different version, but notice that I set it up exactly the same way. I have one last question for you just to confirm. Um, they never mentioned it and they haven't tossed it in yet, but the fact that this is our last dosage calculation and we are on Allegheny campus, so mm -hmm. they're still not talking about putting in uh, like one pint equals two cups, one quart equals two pints, so on and so forth. Are they going to go to like ounces to cup or... No, um, you will most likely just have like, they might ask you to convert milliliters to ounces or ounces to milliliters. Um, so I don't think so. The other campuses like Boyce and North and South do work with cups and pints and quarts. But as far as I know, Allegheny campus still doesn't utilize or doesn't have you do those conversions. Um, there are, um, sometimes it's just good at least to reference it just in case they happen to throw one of those on there. But to my knowledge, it's not something that's been asked. Um, if it hasn't been asked before, I don't anticipate that it's going to be asked this semester. Right. I just wanted to double check on that to make sure, you, you know what I mean? Like they weren't mm -hmm. throwing something in last minute and not telling us because they're great at that. No, they never do. <laughs> yeah, no, not them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, I don't think so. Cause like I said, um, the Boyce Boyce campus, I know definitely needs to know how to do that, but they even do a different, um, intake out output question than you do. You guys do like the fluid replacement volume question. They do a, um, you know, your, your patient it, drinks like a cup of broth and a cup of coffee and a pint of milk and, um, you know, a two, a two and a half ounce like jello dessert. And then they have to convert all that to milliliters, add them all up and then say, this is how much they brought in liquid wise. Um, but so far we're not doing that at Allegheny campus that I'm aware of. And normally I would at least be told that if that was, and then we would even start that in the 110. Um, and so no, I, I'm not, um, there's always the possibility because it is part of like what you need to know, but um, I'm not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sweat that. I would focus more on the other things that are like on, like they give you this review sheet because they're anticipating that this is what you're going to review. And then if they wanted you to review cups and pints and things like that, they would have thrown it on the review. So. All right. Um, 25. Oh, okay. So 25, this is kind of like what we're doing in the heparin protocol, where we're just converting units per hour to milliliters per hour. So the way that I always set this particular type of question up is I start with the 750 units, so 750 units per hour. Then we're going to convert that to milliliters per hour by using what we have available. And what we have available is 25,000 um, units in a one liter bag. So when I set this up, I take my 750 uh, units per hour. I'm gonna get rid of units, multiply by milliliters, and then I get 30 milliliters per hour. Now, some sometimes some of these questions, especially when you get the fourth semester, a lot of the stuff where you're used to using like and doing like ordered over available or desired over have, it doesn't work very well with these flow rate and heparin protocol and these um, uh, 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 rate conversions. And so it's good practice um, to do that. I got 1,000 from this. So one liter is the same thing as 1,000 milliliters. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. 
You got it. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm. I'm here. If you have any other questions, if you're good, you're you're free, you're you're welcome to to bounce out. If you want to just wait around and see if there's any other questions, and um, yeah, that's fine too. Yeah, so for 26, you're exactly right. So I use the 500 milliliters because that's what is mixed in, or that's where the 25,000 units is mixed into. So that's all, that's that's kind of like the secret of these things is just making sure you pair what's in your IV because you can't separate them, right? So that's why I use that 500 milliliters. If it were one liter, then I would use 1,000 milliliters. If it was 250 milliliters, you just use whatever um, whatever is listed there. That's what you use as your milliliters when you're doing your conversions from units per hour to milliliters per hour. And the same thing would go if you were going from milliliters per hour to units per hour, you would just invert, put the units, 25,000 units on top, 500 milliliters on the bottom, and then go from milliliters per hour to units per hour. Um, I know some students don't like the way that I um, set this up, but I just try and keep it, uh, I try and keep it consistent just to let you know, like, you know, um, the reason I do that is just because in my mind, I'm just going from units per hour to milliliters per hour. So how do I get there? Um, some people like to do the start with the milliliters over the units, um, multiply by the units per hour and get the 30 milliliters per hour. Either way, it works out the same. So as long as you're getting the right answer, you're doing it right. All right, number 29. So the trick with this is knowing that these 4M, 8M, 12M, 16M, that is, those are not milliliters. I don't, I'm not sure what unit that is, um, but it's not milliliters. The, these down here are your milliliters. And the only reason I know that is because it tells us it's a one mil, one milliliter tuberculin syringe. And 1.0 is the, the, the max that that goes to. And so I marked at the 0. 0.5. And I'll also add that when you pull this up on um, on the OneDrive folder, you'll be able to see all my marks and everything like that um, that I've put on here. And I'm trying to keep them on there without erasing them. I'll just add more um, questions as opposed to um, deleting them or reworking through them.
number 23. All right. Yeah, so when you're marking uh, your insulin syringe, yeah, so your 22 units always goes here. And the main reason that you do that is because in a hypothetical situation in which the insulins don't mix, this is just your way of indicating that you drew up the 22 units of regular first. So... And then you put your, now this is, I actually do more than what they asked for here, but I, um, enough people have missed this question that I just want to make sure that I think if you mark it more, at least you're being very, very, uh, specific on what you're marking here. And so, um, but looks like you did that correctly. So, all right. And then number 18 Okay, so what this is, like this this right here is just a like an alternative scenario. So all I said was, let's say you got an answer of 2.666666, like after you did your, you know, whatever cc's or milliliters um, divided by the milliliters per hour. Um, and then you got some like weird like number. If you wanted to convert those decimals to minutes, you would just multiply the decimals by 60 minutes. So if I take that point 0.6 repeating, multiply it by 60, um, then I get 40 minutes. It, you actually get like 39.99999, which is 40 minutes. So I don't think you'll need to worry about that. I was just um, using that as a scenario. So obviously the answer to this was 3.5 hours or three hours, 30 minutes. I think it even says 210 minutes. So I don't know what they specifically want. I would assume they would want hours and minutes or at least 3.5 hours, not the 210 minutes. Um, but if you were to get a question like this, so this is 2.6 repeating hours, and then that's how you would convert the 0.6 repeating into minutes, just multiply the decimal and everything after the decimal by 60. You got it. Absolutely. I agree with that hundred percent. Yep. You just, that way you don't, yeah. You know, you never know when they might slide something in there that frustrates you and I, but I'm not anticipating that being an issue. So. Absolutely. Yeah, so 27 is going to be set up the same way as the heparin. It's the same type of question. We're doing units per hour and converting it to milliliters per hour. The only thing is that the units just happen to be smaller numbers. So it tells me I'm infusing at 15 units per hour. And it says we have available 0.9% normal saline, 500 milliliters with 100 units of regular insulin. And so I'm just going to use those two pieces of information to convert units per hour to milliliters per hour. Okay, good. Yeah, like I said, a lot of these, like you did, a, you did a lot of these last semester and in, in the third semester dosage calc. But if you, um, you know, just it doesn't hurt to go back and and practice them some more just to get a refresher. And if you need to see it again, um, like I said, I can work through some more scenarios 
where you can just watch, you know, you know, start with, you know, go to my video, hit pause before I answer the question, see if you can get the answer before I do, um, or, you know, get your answer and then see what it ends up being. Make sure you did everything right. It's really about just kind of repping the steps because the flow of these things are pretty much the same. All right. I think that's a good place to stop for today. So um, as always, um, if you have any questions just and you can't make it to any of the review sessions, just email me and I'll make sure I get your, your questions answered appropriately. And uh, if I don't hear from you, um, good luck. You're almost done. This is not even a full semester for you. you get, you're almost done. So, well, I know it's still a full semester, but you know what I mean.